Hi, my name is Davin Sundvik with The Catch Today, and we are working on hunting story number nine. Now, nine and 10 were shot in the exact same year, um, so you're gonna see a couple of familiar trends between both of them, uh, but without any further ado, let's get right into the reason why we give these stories, which is, uh, first of all, if you're gonna get advice from somebody in the internet, you wanna make sure that their stories are pretty similar to something that you want to experience, and then, the second reason is just for context, right? I want to be able to show my friends, family, you know, maybe future generations and kids um, exactly like what it takes to be a successful hunter. And it, you don't need to do it overnight. I mean, it took me years in order to get where I am today. Um, and I just wanted to, to document that journey along the way. Obviously, the newer stories are going to be much more interesting than the older ones, uh, mainly because I can just remember more details. But without any further ado, let's get right into the content. So. When it comes to uh, my horn shorter than the ears antelope tag, there's there's some context that you got to know, right? I previously shot most of my big game um, rifles. Sorry, uh, I I'd shot with my Mosin a couple of times on some of my big game animals, um, but I had not uh, like picked like a certain rifle that I use all the time. I just kind of used whatever rifle was just you know had the easiest access to. So this was the first time I actually was working at a gun company. I actually bought a gun specifically for um, long range shooting and, and hunting and, and a gun that would that would do both, right? And so uh, hunting with a brand new gun on this particular hunt and because I was working so hard, um, like, you know, I don't wanna say so hard, but it's not like so many hours, but I was working multiple jobs. So I was pretty busy at this time. So my dad and his buddy, um, had already gone up and they both tagged out on opening day and I couldn't make it out there until the second day of the hunting season which was a Saturday um, so they were like yeah we just took two horns shorter than ears uh, antelope and we know exactly where they are they drive me out there to the spot uh, I had barely practiced with this rifle maybe only like you know 10 or or 20 shots just enough to like barely break in the gun and really not enough and you know sure enough you know we we find a herd antelope and then you know we we set up on them a couple of times and there's some other hunters out there and, and they know where the antelope are too and, and they're driving on roads and um eventually we see them you know start to make their way kind of diagonally across this really long section of sagebrush and then it goes up into uh juniper into the hills and then over that juniper is a, a water source now once they get across the road and into the juniper you're not going to find these antelope and that was something that i had to learn about antelope hunting is that just because like you see on tv antelope are mainly in the plains like they're mainly in you know uh, large like flat areas of sagebrush kind of like rolling hills areas where they can see a long distance they do hide in juniper as well it may not be as common as with mule deer hunting or with elk hunting but it does happen so that was a learning uh, experience for me on this particular hunt um and so they're working their way towards juniper and uh something i also learned about antelope hunting is they're they're very persistent about water sources if if they really want to be somewhere and they don't perceive you as a threat um they're gonna they're gonna walk right past you in order to get to that um that source you know it, it, whether it's water or whatever it is and so since other people had just shot you know down the road and they're kind of trying to avoid those people we hadn't taken any shots at them yet um so they weren't really really weren't too spooked they weren't too afraid of our presence and so we were able to just drive down the road i was able to walk off the road i don't know maybe 50 yards or so just to get into a shooting position on a little hill uh, got right into prone took a shot at a about 150 yards and dropped the antelope you know and so it didn't drop like right in its tracks it ran a little bit had to track the blood um, and then found it on the ground you know completely dead pretty uneventful right uh, so I do want to mention the, you'll see a, a theme here of, of missing animals in the next few stories, um, be, because um, I didn't understand that with with barrels that are very, because my, my 30 out 6 has a very thin barrel on it, so it's very sensitive to ammo changes, changes, changes in temperature, um, and, and a variety of other things. I didn't realize that you have to use, like you have to find an ammo that works for your gun, right? I had always used other people's guns where they've already found the ammo that works great in their gun. So 
Um, so I was overconfident, even though I, <laughs> I hit this animal, right? I was, I was overconfident in this gun's ability because I just thought, okay, well, I'm just going to be able to go out there and hunt any, any animal, just like how I did this one and just take one shot and get it. So, um, you know, sometimes our hunts go easier than expected and we have to, we have to just like, let us like, let ourselves know, Hey, look, I got lucky on this one, or I was just fortunate on this hunt or, or whatever it was, the hunting was good things went in my favor because you're not always going to be lucky, right? Sometimes you're going to have to put in a lot of hard work in order to get a big game animal, especially out here in Western big game hunting, like I do, which is in Nevada. So, um, again, this is a short one, kind of boring. You know, we ended up going back to camp. It was a fun time. You know, um, I went back home and then, you know, I, I saved more, <laughs> more days off to be able to go hunt um, my elk, which was, uh, you know, later on in the season. So I'll, uh, I'll see you guys on that one and I'll film them back to back. So I'm going to be wearing the same shirt on that one. So I appreciate you guys for watching and comment down below and I'll see you guys on hunting story number 10.